trajectory brings it down and out. Well, good morning. Today we're going to talk about how to use a post hole digger, or basically how I use a post hole digger on a smaller tractor like a this size tractor and down, say, to a subcompact. I get a lot of questions. I made a couple of videos in the past, but never none of them are completely comprehensive. So today I'm going to do my best and try to explain all the things I've learned over the years about using a post hole digger. Let's get to it. Know before you dig, before you dig anything with your post hole digger, dial 811 and have a free inspection done. The utility companies will come out and mark your all the utilities and this will cover you uh, not only from damaging the utilities but also it will reduce some of your liabilities. Hey, I'd like to take this time to thank hi C for sponsoring today's video. hi C makes an ever-growing line of clothing and footwear to meet your outdoor needs. We'll leave a link in the description of this video below. And because you are our viewers, hi C is offered a 20% discount code using code TONY20. So as you can see, I really took my time in placing the auger. And let me tell you why that's important. So a six by six is not truly a six by six. It's five and a half inches by five and a half inches. And what we have here is a nine inch auger. So it's gonna dig a nine inch circle for the five and a half inch by five and a half inch square post to go down in. So that at the very peaks of the post, that leaves you roughly one and a half inches to one and three quarters inches on either side. So that's not a lot of play. It's very, very important when you start your post hole dig is to make sure your auger tip starts in the exact right place. Be aware that as when you start your auger, you wanna make sure that there's enough pressure on it that it doesn't wander because the auger can wander around. When you make first turn it on, make sure that you're paying attention to that. So this is the next portion, and this is sometimes hard, especially if you're by yourself. You have to get off the tractor and make sure that your auger, as you can see from right now, the auger is leaned uh, forward just a little bit. So you have to pay attention that the auger is pushed back and starting straight. If you start the hole crooked, it's gonna be crooked. Remember, it's not only important to level the auger front to rear, but also from left to right. And I'll show you how to do the left to right in just a minute. It is better to have a helper and that can guide you and tell you when it's, it's square, but after you do it quite a while, you can learn uh, to visualize it from the tractor. But until you get to that point, get off the tractor and look. So what I'm gonna do now is just back it up a little bit so I feel like it's level. Lock down the brakes. We'll go take a look. It's pretty straight. The last thing we're gonna talk about before we get on the tractor and actually start augering this hoe out is as the uh, three-point hitch drops, this boom trajectory brings it down and out. So what, what that means that as you go down into the hole, you're, you need to bring the tractor, inch it forward really, really slowly. As you do it a whole bunch of times, you'll learn to do, you'll, you can kind of visualize it from the tractor seat. However, there's nothing wrong with getting two or three inches into the ground, stopping the tractor, turning it off, coming back and examining your work. You can, you can then adjust forward or back however you need to. And also you can, as it's going into the hole, if it starts leaning to the left or right, you can move it left or right with the front wheels. Because the post hole digger, the auger is on a single point, the auger is gonna wanna tilt left or right. And how you can correct the wrong tilt is by backing up or going forward, changing your steering. So you can lean it one way or lean it the other way by backing up and going forward. So this may, to get the auger completely straight, it might take you a few tries, but it's better to get it right and get it started level the first time. 
So you can see the auger is leaned over and what I'm going to do is turn my steering wheel to the to the left and back up and it'll pivot the auger back in the upright position. It may take you a couple of times. So I fed it straight up and down and now I'm going to pull back forward to make sure it's level. Again, you only get one shot at starting this out so make sure that it's level on all axes. That's pretty doggone straight. I like it. So we're going to talk about the, the valve that controls how fast your three-point hitch can drop. This is very important when you're looking at the subcompact tractors because what can happen is if you have your valve open wide up and it lets the three-point hitch drop really, really fast, the auger can literally screw itself into the ground and then your tractor will not have enough strength to pull it back out. It'll screw into the ground, kill the tractor's engine, and you're kind of stuck. The I have done that before and had to take a big, huge uh, pipe wrench and unscrew the auger out of the ground. That was not a fun day, uh, and it was pretty hot that day. So adjust the valve so that it allows your three-point hitch to drop very slowly, and that'll cause the dirt to be augered out of the hole and not your auger screwing into the ground. That's the, that's the game. So what's the next thing we need to do is determine how deep we would like the hole to go. Now you, de you don't wanna count the point, the tip of the, of the auger. You wanna count the first row of cutters. That's basically gonna be the flat portion of the bottom of your hole. In my case, we wanna go a little bit over two feet deep. So you hang your tape measure. And in our case, it's going to be pretty much to the top of the fin. It's gonna be 28 inches. Now I have seen people put colorful tape around whatever their level is and they can make or like little paint marks inside here. That's a great a great way to visually see how deep your, your postal digger is. Our case, we just need it to go to the top of this. Come on. So you've seen I made gizmo leave. Make sure no one is around your auger uh, when it's turning. I, I grew up on the farm and I've seen in my whole life, we probably were not the safest people in the world. I've seen people grab a hold to the augers and they were moving the augers back and forth by hand and there's been many many injuries and uh, arms amputated uh, by PTO shafts. As you can see my PTO shaft protector is broken and that's very common on a PTO shaft on a postal digger because as the as the PTO digs down into the ground sometimes the dirt will hit this and break it so you can repair this pretty often and still get broke the next time you use it so I don't repair this I just make sure that no one's around it there's there's really no reason to rev your engine up really really fast while cutting especially in soft ground just let it let it take its time and use your slow rpm it's also easier to keep a uh, clean hole What I'm doing now, I can see that my post hole digger has fell to the left. I'm going to turn my steering wheel to the right. I'm going to pull forward just a little bit. I know I'm getting out of, out of level, but I straightened it up. Now I'm going to back up and level it out again. We look good? From where you're at right there, does it look good? I got a thumbs up. Now we have a very dry summer right now and this is clay and it is brutally hard uh, to dig. But patience, get it done. We'll throttle up just a little bit. Nothing crazy, just let it, let it grind. During the spring, we can we can bury the auger in just a split second. During the summer, when this clay dries out, it is pretty much like drilling holes in concrete. If your auger is not going down at all, make sure that you don't make sure that your valve is not turned on so tight that it won't let it go down. You need a little downwards pressure. You just want to make sure that the auger doesn't screw into the ground. 
And these are all things that will get easier and easier as you get more uh, time on the auger. So one more trick is let the auger fill up when you get all the way down and then lift your auger all the way out with the dirt on it. Keep so most of the dirt from getting in the back into the hole. Just ease forward. Bump your throttle a little bit. Throw the dirt off. You also want to make sure that your side linkages are tight holding the the uh, auger as straight as you can. You don't want it to just be rocking back and forth. The more rock you have back and forth, the harder it is to work with it. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. And if you did find it helpful, please hit that thumbs up and the subscribe button. It really helps our channel out. Listen, God bless. Have a great day.